negative one half. I'm going to leave this one for you to do, but here's my question. What quadrants will this answer be in? Two and three, because those are the two places where you will have a negative cosine answer. Right? So go ahead and do it. So I have the cosine of t is equal to negative one half. Yes? By the way, you've got to have at least some of the circle memorized to answer the next question. T is equal to then the cosine inverse of negative one half. What quadrant is this in? Inverse cosines come out in which quadrants? Between 0 and pi, which will be quadrants 1 and 2. In quadrant 1, your cosine is positive. In quadrant 2, your cosine is negative. So this must be in which quadrant? 2. 2. So this is one of your answers. Because it's in quadrant 2, going from 0 to pi, which is in the right direction and within the space that we want it. So that's one of my answers. And you should actually know what that is. How many of you know what this is? Think about it. It's this one right here, the 2 pi over 3. Now, I'm in quadrant 2. How do I find my reference angle in quadrant 2? So with the cosines, I get to skip a step. It's kind of nice. I don't have to do this piece where I had to add the 2 pi to it because I'm already, every one of my cosine inverse answers already gets me one of the answers every time, because cosine inverse always comes out between 0 and pi, so I have one of my answers, half of, it, half of it's done. So I get to now find the reference angle, reference angle. You. <laughs> <laughs> reference angle, yes. <laughs> you like reference angle? Yeah, let's get a new, you know, make it easier, wrap one. There we go. Yeah, I was going to say, I think we need a new word. It'll just be nicer. The refrangle. <laughs> All right. So how do we find the refrangle in quadrant two? It's pi minus the angle. So in this case, it's going to be pi minus this angle, which is cosine inverse of negative one half. Now, I want to take this angle. That's my reference angle, and I want to put it in quadrant three. So I'm going to put it in quadrant three. In quadrant three, how do I find my reference angle? How do I find reference angle in quadrant three? Angle minus pi. Angle minus pi. Angle minus pi. So the reference angle, there we go, I spelled it right this time, equals the angle minus pi. Well, that's this number. It's going to go in here for the reference angle. So this is pi minus the cosine inverse of negative one half. That's going to be equal to the angle minus pi. How do I solve for the angle? Add pi to both sides. Negative over here. So I add it over here. When I add pi to pi, I'll get two pi. And it'll be two pi minus the cosine inverse of negative one half. That's equal to my other angle. So my two answers are this one and, where'd the other one go? This one. This one is the 2 pi over 3. This answer is the 4 pi over 3. Check it out, you'll find out it works. But this was a lot easier for those of you who remembered your unit circle, yes? Because all you had to do was spit this out. None of this work was necessary. And you're going, oh my gosh, what in the world? I bet this weekend a lot of you are going to go home and learn your unit circle really fast. Now, what about this one, by the way, the unit circle is not going to help you. Well, not the memorized chart bless you. I want to solve sine squared of t equals one half. How do I solve such an equation? So I have sine squared of t equals one half. Actually, I'm sorry, this will help. The reference angle will help here. It's the one, the other one that I've 
So that gives me a quadrant two. Where is the sine of t equal to the negative square root of two over two? Five pi over four and seven pi over four. Five pi over four and seven pi over four. How many of you are thinking, okay, let's just memorize the unit circle. This makes life really nice. Yes? Good. <laughs> so this weekend, work on that. Use them several times while you're working on your homework. Because you will definitely want them with very few exceptions Two out of the ten problems here, all of them are ones you should know except for two. And then you actually have to go through this process with those because they're not numbers that you know. All right. What about this thing? Sine of t, cosine of t minus cosine of t plus two sine of t minus one. Suggestions for how to solve this. What if I told you this factors? Would you look at me in disbelief? Yeah, you think so? All right. I'm going to color code what I write down here while I write down the equation. So I have two sine of t, cosine of t, minus cosine of t, plus 2 sine of t, minus 1, equals 0. Looking at just the red part, by the way, this is a special way or it's not really a special way, but one way to go about looking at factoring things that have four parts to them. So you can usually do this with cubics. If you get a cubic and somebody tells you you can factor this thing, this is likely the way you're going to be able to factor the cubic. The red part has something in common. What, does, what do both red pieces have in them? A cosine of t. So I can factor that out of the red pieces. So when I factor it out of the first piece of, the, of this, we have 2 sine of t, cosine of t. What am I left with? 2 times the sine of t. When I factor it out of the second piece, what am I left with? Minus 1. And I still have this plus 2 sine of t minus 1 equals 0. 